Welcome to the Data Center Infrastructure Free Class. This part is an introduction to standby generators and the subsystems to power data center load when the utility cannot supply. What is standby generator system? A standby generator system is a combination of an electrical generator and a mechanical engine mounted together to form a single piece of equipment. The components of a generator include the prime mover, the alternator, the governor, and the distribution system. The distribution system is made up of several subcomponents, which include the automatic transfer switch ATS, switchgear, switchboards distribution panels, and etc. In many instances, generators also include a fuel tank and are equipped with a battery and electric starter. Before continuing, it's a good idea to prepare notes to write down some of the points you think are important to you from this material. Internal Combustion Engine or Prime Mover In basic terms, an internal combustion engine converts its fuel source into mechanical motion through moving internal parts. When the outside air mixes with the fuel inside the engine, these moving parts ignite the air-slash-fuel mixture to create a controlled internal explosion, combustion, in the cavities known as cylinders. The most commonly used for standby generator systems is the four-stroke engine. It is called a four-stroke engine because of the four distinct stages that occur in the combustion cycle. This stage includes the intake of the air-slash-fuel mixture, compression of the mixture, combustion or explosion, and exhaust. When referring to a generator, a four-stroke engine is generally referred to as the prime mover. Okay, let's discuss about the core attributes of prime movers. Fuel There are four main fuels used to drive the generator. This includes diesel, natural gas, liquid petroleum, and gasoline. Some case there is a dual fuel engines. The choice of fuel type depends on variables such as storage, cost, and accessibility. Generator systems with diesel or natural gas engines are the most commonly used standby power generators to support data centers. The availability of fuel generally determines the type of standby generator selected. For example, if the generator is located in a remote area where public utilities are not available, diesel or liquid petroleum is a logical choice. In addition, the type of generator fuel, as well as the magnitude of the potential gradual load changes, or whether the generator is expected to support instantaneous changes in load current, from zero to full load for example, will affect the choice of regulator. Since these factors contribute to the accuracy and stability of the prime mover speed, they must be considered in the overall design. Let's review some of the advantages and disadvantages of different types of fuel. Diesel Diesel fuel is often chosen in many applications because of its easy on-site storage, fewer problems with long-term storage, reduced fire hazard, and more hours of operation between overhauls. Disadvantages of using diesel fuel are its low volatility at low ambient temperatures and diesel does not burn as cleanly as natural gas or liquefied petroleum gas and therefore potentially harmful effects on the environment. Natural gas. Natural gas is used quite often due to its numerous advantages. Natural gas is a clean burning fuel with less exhaust emissions, and the exhaust is less harmful to the environment than diesel. Because natural gas is a cleaner fuel, there is minimum carbon buildup and cleaner crankcase oil. Additionally, there are no fuel storage problems, and there is less engine maintenance than diesel or gasoline generators. The disadvantages of using natural gas are the high cost. Gas generators tend to cost more than other generator types, and you are also limited in the size of the generator. Natural gas is provided by a single source, it's regulated by the pipeline it is connected to. Subsequently, during emergencies, gas lines can get sucked dry by other consumers, and if you're towards the end of the line, you might not be able to get supply. Safety is also another factor. If there are leaks it has a high explosive capability. Lastly, the energy content of natural gas is lower than most other fuel sources, so you need more of it to generate electricity for your generator. Liquid Petroleum The advantages of using a generator powered by liquefied petroleum are similar to those of natural gas. It is a clean burning fuel with less environmental impact than diesel, and the exhaust is less harmful to the environment. In addition, there are no fuel storage problems and less engine maintenance than diesel or gasoline generators. The biggest disadvantage of using a liquefied petroleum-powered generator is that liquid petroleum presents the greatest danger. If any liquid petroleum vapor leaks or escapes, as it is heavier than air, the liquid petroleum will flow into low-lying areas such as basements and pose a potential explosion hazard. Gasoline 
Gasoline is often used in smaller engine generator sets due to the fact that it is readily available and that gasoline-powered engines start easier than diesel engines in cold temperatures. The disadvantages are that the storage of gasoline is a fire hazard and that long-term storage and usage of old gasoline can be detrimental to the performance of the generator engine. Lastly, there is the option of using a dual-fuel engine. For example, if the generator is capable of using natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas, it offers more flexibility when considering environmental safety requirements as well as redundant power requirements. After examining fuel types, let's look at another important aspect of the generator function. Cooling. Lubrication. Air filter and fuel filter. The majority of prime movers for generator applications are cooled with a radiator cooling system much like the cooling system in an automobile. A fan is used to move sufficient air over the radiator to maintain a moderate engine temperature. The waste heat is drawn off the radiator to the outside, with ductwork of the same cross-sectional area as the radiator face. The intake air opening, like louvers into the room, is typically 25 to 50% larger than its ductwork. Rigorous maintenance of the cooling system is needed for reliable operation. Coolant hoses, coolant level, water pump operation, and antifreeze protection must be diligently reviewed for acceptable performance. Modern four-stroke engines utilize full-flow filter systems, which pump the lube oil through externally mounted filters to prevent harmful particles and contaminants from damaging the moving parts or bearings. Makeup oil reservoirs are used to maintain proper oil levels, and external oil coolers assist in preventing lubrication breakdown due to high temperatures. Air and fuel filters are critical elements for the reliable operation of the prime mover. Like the other components previously mentioned, it is essential that a proper maintenance schedule be followed. A system that includes dual redundant fuel lines and filters is a significant benefit in mission critical applications where long runtime must be supported. This is because fuel lines and filters can be isolated and changed while the engine remains running. Not having spare parts for filters and other consumables can result in downtime. Proactive monitoring of these filters is done with differential pressure indicators. They show the pressure difference across a filter or between two fuel lines during engine operation. When applied to air filters, these proactive monitoring devices are known as air restrict indicators. These provide a visual indication of the need to replace a dry type intake air filter while the generator engine runs. The next component of the prime mover that we will be discussing is the starter motor. Starter motor. The starter motor system is one of the most critical elements to the successful use of a generator. Numerous studies have found startup failures to be the leading cause of generator system failures. The majority of the conventional starter motor is battery-operated starter motor, although pneumatic or hydraulic are sometimes found on the heaviest prime mover. That's why the critical element in the conventional starter is clearly battery system. During unused periods, some engines does nothing to prevent battery discharge. That's why we need best practice to keep the battery warm and corrosion-free, for example, providing a separate automatic charging system with remote alarm. And also provide engine block heaters to reduce the frictional forces that the starter motor must work against when energized. When considering a standby generator, the minimum time to detect a power problem, start the prime mover, establish stable output frequency and voltage, and connect to loads is usually at least 10 to 15 seconds. However, many systems in use today do not reliably perform to this very quick deployment due to such factors as uncharged or stolen batteries. Other factors include improper maintenance and human error. Conscientious maintenance and design of a starter motor is absolutely critical to achieving a respectable success rate for generator startup systems. The alternator is another critical component of the generator. This is the electrical generation component. The main function of the alternator is to convert mechanical energy from the prime mover into alternating current. This is similar to the alternator in an automobile however, in an automobile, it is usually driven by a belt, whereas in a generator it is driven by the main drive shaft of the prime mover. The following diagram illustrates a cross-sectional view of a self-excited, externally regulated, brushless alternator. The brushless designation refers to the fact that this design requires no contacts be placed against any revolving parts to transfer electrical energy to or from the components. Brushes in motors and very small generators may still be an acceptable design, but predictably the brushes were out with use and are impossible to inspect in a proactive manner. A large generator design that relies on brushes is not up to the reliability standards needed for mission-critical operation. 
When a generator is described as self-excited it means that the electricity used to create the electromagnetic field is created within the alternator itself thereby allowing the alternator to produce large amounts of electricity with no other energy than what is provided by the prime mover. The main stator or armature windings are the stationary coils of wire where the electricity for the critical loads begins to be generated. The characteristics of the alternating current produced are related to the quantity and geometry of the coil windings. A large variety of configurations are available to deliver combinations of ampacity and voltage requirements. The governor. The governor is a key component in determining the AC output power quality. This item maintains constant RPM of the prime mover under a variety of conditions by adjusting the fuel that feeds the prime mover. Many system designs exist, from simple spring types to complex hydraulics and electronic systems that dynamically adjust the fuel throttle to keep the engine at constant RPM. A stable AC frequency is required and is directly proportional to the accuracy and response time of the governor. Frequency variation and its impact on power quality is not a problem that users must contend with when connected to a stable utility grid. However, sensitive electronics are vulnerable to disruption due to abrupt changes in frequency under the influence of generator power. The generator's capability to produce a constant frequency is directly proportional to the RPM speed of the prime mover, which is controlled by the governor. Simply adding or removing loads, or cycling those loads on and off, creates conditions to which the governor must respond. An isochronous governor design maintains constant speed regardless of load level. Small variations on the speed of the prime mover still occur, and their extent is a measure of the governor's stability. Today governor technology exists to maintain frequency regulation to within plus or minus 0.25% with response times to changing loads on the order of 1 to 3 seconds. Sophisticated electronic governor systems for paralleling have recently been developed that provide superior coordination and frequency stability under a variety of conditions. When two or more generators are paralleled for capacity or redundancy, they must all be governed at the same speed using either the utility or another generator as the primary frequency reference. This is because if the two sources are out of sync, one of them will carry a larger fraction of the load, which will result in a needed correction. These advances are a welcome enhancement to the high availability requirements of today's data centers, due to their reliability, reduced maintenance, and coordination efforts. There are a lot of non-linear load in data center. Nonlinear loads draw current in a manner that is inconsistent with the voltage waveform. Nonlinear loads can interact negatively with a generator system thereby jeopardizing the availability of the critical load during standby operation. That's why we need voltage regulator. The basic function voltage regulator is to control the voltage produced at the output of the alternator by configuring a system with an appropriate response time to minimize sags and surges that occur as the load changes. Switch gear and distribution. This diagram illustrates how the automatic transfer switch ATS monitors the utility source and initiate engine starting and transfer of the load from the utility to the generator as soon as the generator is available and stable. The ATS also retransfers the load to utility when normal conditions are restored. We will discuss more about ATS in another video. Grounding performs such critical functions as preventing the shock or electrocution of maintenance or repair technicians. Ensuring that circuit breakers trip before electrical malfunctions develop into fires. And provide a low impedance path for internal processing signals. Preventative maintenance program is going to require shutting off all power for approximately 10 to 20 hours once a year. This will help to check the tightness of all medium voltage, MV, and switchgear terminations. If a total shutdown is not a possibility, Thermal imaging can be used to detect any hot spots caused by electrical terminations and connections. The trip setting of major circuit breakers should be tested. Transformers and cables should be tested and lastly, coolant samples should be taken for signs of insulation deterioration. To ensure reliability of your generator, a management system that monitors all generator subsystems and provides early warning through preventative maintenance reminders is required. Here are the few keys. Coolant hoses, coolant level, water pump operation, and antifreeze protection must be diligently reviewed for acceptable performance. Real-time remote and local monitoring system that provides critical information and alarms at every interface. Battery monitoring and weak battery detection. An automatic alarm that is sent whenever the controller is not set to automatic, the emergency stop is engaged, or the generator output breaker is not closed. Block temperature and coolant level monitoring and alarms. Fuel level and load power measurements, available even when the generator is in standby. 
oil level monitoring so that oil can be added or leaks repaired, rather than waiting for the generator to start and shut down due to low pressure. That's all the lesson. Do not hesitate to put advice on comment.